morning and welcome to Melvin Village Community Church. I hope you um, this morning we have a special special birthday to Barbara Williams. Some announcements this morning uh, in your bulletin. You'll see that uh, this after the service, we're going to be moving the uh, memorial geraniums out to the front of the church and um, having a little prayer of dedication. And if you are wanting to help plant those sometime, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we are having a fair and auction meeting Tuesday at 6 p.m. here at the church, meeting in the Grabel room. And also, if you have folders downstairs in the office, um, please just be sure to check those. I know we have been away from the building for a while, uh, but there are things in the folders. So if you have one, please, uh, at some point today, if you can just run down and check those, that would be excellent. Uh, this is the last call for the new directory. It's going to be printed soon. Uh, last call today. If you have any changes, that if, or if you are not in the directory and would like to be, uh, there are um, inserts in the back that you can grab and fill out. That would be awesome. Thank you. Are there any other announcements this morning? Susie? Basically, it's an auction, flea market, we're going to have games, we're going to have a food booth and some other goodies. Um, if you have donations for the auction, we are opening the barn the next two Saturdays from 9 to noon for auction items only. Um, if you have wares and stuff you've been saving for a year and a half and you just want to get rid of them on your way out, uh, grab a registration form 
You can uh, rent a space, basically. Um, it's a $25 donation to the church. And um, you can set up a table that day. So we're going to have that's what will make up the flea market portion of our uh, fair and auction, our, our new look to our fair and auction. And I'm sure I'm missing something, but uh, I think that's all I'll say. Other than awesome job of the scavenger hunt last Sunday for those of you who drew it there. Did you have one? Okay. Just two quick ones. Good morning. It's good to see everyone. Um, first of all, Tracy has been doing, um, as we see, the, the month of May, our worship leader, and we thank you for that. Um, we're trying to get worship leaders for more than one Sunday, and uh, I'm happy to say we're actually filled through pretty much the middle of September right now. So thank you, those that have stepped up. If you're interested in the next quarter, just um, e email or send a message to Judy. But um, we're asking for people to do at least two Sundays. If you want to do a month, that's great. The reason for that is consistency, and uh, I think by two or three, you were, you're comfortable at that point. Yeah, the right? first week, you was a little nervous, <laughs> but then you're fine, so, so the more, awesome. the better. And, and for worship leaders, we do give you the information, um, so you, you have it all. You don't have to make it up, So, um, but we'd love our church family to be involved. The second announcement I have, on June 13th, we, we are going to be welcoming four new members, bless you, into, um, into our fellowship. So there is still time if you would like to be a member, um, just let me know. Uh, and again, on June 13th, we'll have um, we'll welcome those new members in. Thanks. Are there any others? All right. Seeing none, let us prepare for worship while the light and the word are brought into the sanctuary. if you're able for the call to worship on your bulletin. 
O compassionate one, grant compassion unto us, that we may help all fellow souls in need. Bless us with your love, O God. Bless us with your love. We now pray together in this love, truth, and unity together, the words you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 43. Verses 1 through 3. You can find it on page 623 of your Pew Bible. Isaiah 43. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, for he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. The word of the Lord. Remembering the opportunity for worship this morning, I'd invite our ushers to come forward for this morning's offering. Father God, we give today not out of obligation, but out of worship. Lord, I ask that you would take these gifts, Lord, that you would use them for the work of this church throughout the community and throughout the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please be seated. This morning's New Testament reading comes from Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. Uh, We're continuing our lessons of the faith, and today we'll be looking at the deep, deep love of God. Um, It's a prayer for the Ephesians, as as Paul writes, and he uh, starts out in verse 14, and he says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its names. Its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through this whole through his spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high. And deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is, in wor- that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather today. Lord, a day of remembrance. We remember those who allow us to come together. Lord, for our freedoms, we give you thanks. Lord, we ask that you'd be with us right now, that you'd bless this time together. Lord, the distractions, they are so many around us. And we ask right now that you would quiet our hearts. Lord, that we could just sit at your feet for a few moments. And just remember the love and the deep love of God. Lord, I ask that these words that you've laid on my heart to share this morning, Lord, they'd fall on ears that need to hear. And Lord, the words would not come from Kevin, but come from you. We thank you and be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I got to take the jacket off. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have a couple things going on in our life right now. So uh, I said this month has been just a busy month. We started with uh, a, a wedding, a graduation, a wedding, and tomorrow uh, we'll, be, we'll be sending our, our first off to uh, his new apartment. So Tucker's uh, going to be settled down in Newburyport. So we have a couple things going on in our life right now. So we pick up the U-Haul truck later today. <laughs> hmm. Rooted in the love of God. There was a man named George, and he was a peacemaker with a big heart and a wonderful sense of humor. Everyone loved George at church, and he was respected at the hospital where he worked. The reason why so many people loved George was because he was kind and he was respectful and loving to everyone that he met. And George's children clearly remember the days that George spent in the hospital before he passed. The administrator of the hospital paid him a visit and they spoke though they were old friends. A few moments later, one of the janitors from the hospital came in and they too had a nice visit. When the janitor left, one of George's children said, Dad, did you realize that you just treated the president of the hospital the same way you treated the janitor? And George smiled and chuckled and said, let me ask you something. If the administrator left for two weeks and the janitor left for two weeks, which do you think would be missed the most? (laughs) Well, then George called his children around his bedside. Let me show you something that I carry in my pocket all the time. He told them, even even when I mow the lawn. (laughs) And George pulled out of his pocket a pocket-sized cross, and in the other pocket he pulled out a marble with the golden rule written on it. And the marble had these words, do unto others as you would have them done to you. He said, the cross reminds me how deep God loves me, and the marble reminds me how deeply God wants me to love others. Love God, 
love others, a constant theme that we share in church and the importance. And as we come to this part of Ephesians, we look at the depth of God's love as we dwell with him. Again, the cross reminds us that God loves us and the golden rule do unto others as you have done to you reminds us how that we are to be with our neighbor. And this is Paul's prayer to the Ephesians, his charge, his hope for these people that the people would find their strength in the spirit that Christ would dwell within their hearts. Today, as we look at the end of chapter three of Ephesians, and we've been through these three chapters for the past several weeks, we've unpacked these lessons of the faith. Remember each of them, we talked about the spiritual inheritance that we have access to each and every day. And the question is, do we access that inheritance as we petition God give us this day our daily bread then we have the power of God which is also accessible to us as followers of God do we use it not for our sake but for the sake and the will of God God's grace landed on Mother's Day and it's a common theme that's threaded throughout scripture the unmerited favor that God freely gives do we accept this doctrine of grace with God and then do we show it to those around us? Last week on Pentecost Sunday, we looked at the important work of the church. And when we understand our purpose and the outflow of inreach and outreach, the building up of the body and the natural flow of outreach and to help those in need. We also looked at peace and reconciliation and that's an important tenet of our faith. This inheritance, power, grace, reconciliation, and the church all happen when we dwell in Christ. Our relationship with God, and I often say, is not like a vending machine when we go to God and we need something that we press a button, but the relationship should be more natural, like breathing as we dwell with God. This dwelling happens when we pray and when we seek God in our lives. I've mentioned before that the first three chapters of Ephesians fit nicely as they talk about the doctrine, what we believe, whereas the last three chapters that we'll be looking at are how to behave. Paul's letters in the first three are prayers for the people that he loves so very much. And prayer is the key to unlocking these doctrines and finding peace in relationship with God in these lessons of faith, as we call them. The verse begins, for this reason, I kneel before my father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of the glorious riches that he may strengthen you and with his power through your spirit and your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you Hudson Taylor was a 19th century missionary to China for 51 years. And he knew his purpose and he knew the importance of peace because he centered his life around prayer. It's where he became in harmony with God each and every day. Hudson reminds us, do not have your concert first and then tune your instrument afterwards. <laughs> Begin the day with the word of God and prayer and first get all that harmony together with him. How our lives would be different if instead of bolting right out in the busyness of the day, we slowed down a bit and we found time to be in harmony with God. Again, if we want to find harmony with God, we need to begin the day tuning our instruments. These undistracted intentional times allow Christ to dwell in our hearts through faith, causing us to be rooted and established in love, giving us the power to grasp the love of God and to know that this love surpasses the knowledge causing us to be filled. As we unpack God's love for us and the love that we have for others, we see the importance of three topics as we see here. I love the term rooted and established in love. We planted some trees this week, some uh, plants and things this week and um, rooted and established. We put cages around them so the tomato plants as they grow would be rooted and established to know God through his love and then his power through 
being at work. And these, these um, three important pieces, being rooted and to know and his power, are important as we look at what it means to dwell with God. Rooted in love, again, we see that in the first few verses, so that Christ may dwell through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love. Uh, fresh cut grass, when I went home from the church, people were mowing their lawns this week from my time in the office. And I love the smell of fresh cut grass. Um, it reminds me of spring. And as I mentioned, we, we did some planting this week. And in the, in the springtime, it's the time many of us plant our summer garden. Some prepare for the, the winter months. We, we, do, we do the seedlings, light, water, good soil. And I love uh, fresh kale and tomatoes. <laughs> the tomatoes, they grow tall because of the soil that we provide. And we have to provide that important, good soil, established, firm, strong, producing plants. Well, here we see being rooted in love is, is Paul's prayerful petition for the church of Ephesus to catch the refreshment of relationship with God that he was experiencing. And this was his prayer. And this is my prayer for each of us as the importance that God strengthens us with his power of his spirit in his inner being. And when this happens, Christ dwells within our hearts and we are being rooted and established in love. The Christian experience is an experience of love. The love we receive from God and the love we show to others. This is the truth of the message of Christ. When we speak this truth of the gospel of love, and I've said this before, that, that truth without love is hypocrisy. We need the two together. We need the two to work together, truth and love together. And as we walk with God, the deeper our relationship grows, the deeper our awareness of God's love becomes. And besides just an awareness of his love, we have great confidence. And don't we all need more confidence? Again, when we are rooted and established firmly in the love of God, we gain that confidence in, our, in ourselves to God. No matter what's happening around us, we fall back on God's love to carry us through difficult situations. And we have the joy of the Lord, which no circumstance in life may shake. We have this because we continue to grow in the knowledge of God's love. Besides confidence, another thing we go after is freedom. And we have freedom because we are rooted and established in God's love. This freedom allows us to remember that we are created at, to God as a masterpiece, a poem wonderfully and uniquely made. God created us and knows us, the real us, and he meets us there. Confidence and freedom leads to peace when we're rooted in love. God's love drives away doubt. Dwelling in God's love, there is no place for worry or anxiety. Like a blanket on a cool evening, we are warmed by God's love and his peace covered. God's love helps us to look forward to the future with hope. The establishment happens again after we are rooted and planted and then we become established through his foundation. When we are rooted and established in God's love, Christ dwells within our hearts, and then we are confident, we're free, and we are at peace. The beauty part of that is then we're able to go out and produce beautiful fruit for his glory. Often we say, what if I'm not ready for all this? What if I'm not ready for God? Some people may ask you, then accept the gift of his love, that love that's patient, kind, Gracious, honoring, truth rejoicing love, protecting love, trusting love, hoping love, persevering love. When we receive and gain that kind of love, we accept and we give God to people, deeply rooted and established. Deeply rooted love goes to knowing. Verse 18 says, may have power through all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep 
the love of Christ is. And to know that this all-surpassing knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure and the fullness of God. Why? <laughs> From the first moments of life, we wonder. When we put together our first words, we say, why? Why is a sign of curiosity and wanting to understand the world around us. Understanding helps us understand and increase our security and our confidence. So those why questions are important. And why doesn't stop with toddlers? We continue to wonder. I wonder what I'll be when I grow up. I wonder how to get there, here from there. I wonder why certain people don't use blinkers. <laughs> I wonder why we waste so much time when there is so little time at all. I wonder why true love makes it hard to breathe. I wonder how many married couples are really deeply in love with each other. I wonder how it'll all turn out. I wonder how much doubt impedes our lives. I wonder why everyone doesn't take more time to sit and wonder, to know. We wonder in life and we wonder in our faith to know, to know that this love, that surpassing knowledge, wondering that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Love surpasses knowledge. Paul is speaking about an experience of God's love in such a way that's infinitely greater than mere intellectual knowledge. And this is where faith and stepping out to trust God comes in. To know this love, we are full. So how do we know God more? Simply we seek him. Amos 5, 4 and 6 says, for thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, seek me that you may live. Psalm 22, 26 says, the poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. Psalm 69, 32 says, the humble will see their God at work and be glad. Let all who seek God's help be encouraged. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love those who love me and those who diligently seek me will find me. Seeking God gives life. Seeking God is heart healthy. Seeking God provides encouragement. Seeking allows us to know the fullness of his love and to see his power at work. The last point we see in verse 20, it says, God's power at work. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is in, at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Rooted and established in God's love, to know this love of a lifetime of seeking and grasping. The power is at work within us. Verse 20 and 21, what I just read, is the most used benediction to send people into the world after a church service. God is able to do more than we ask or imagine, immeasurably more. Why? Well, according to his power that is at work within us. Why? For his glory in the church and to Christ through all generations. God's power is at work. We have access to this power through prayer and relationship with God. God's power is conforming. God's power is at work and it conforms us into the image of his son. He is working in us to make a reflection of Christ within our hearts and within our actions. The challenges that we face in life mixed with the power of his spirit allow us to be changed. God's work is possible. God's work through his power makes the impossible possible. Within our own efforts, we would not be able to overcome our stubborn habits, our pride, or our hang-ups. His power works within us 
to enable us and overcome. I'm going to give you a, a two for one with uh, Hudson Taylor. He said this, this is a great quote when we look at things that are impossible. There are three stages to every great work of God. First, the impossible, then the difficult, then it's done. <laughs> God's power sustains us. We all face times of trouble in life and we don't know what we are going to do next. But God's power at work within us takes us through those difficult times. God keeps us. He strengthens us. He supports us. God sustains us through faith. God's power is big enough, strong enough, mighty enough to declare a hopeless situation hopeful. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, Ah, Lord, it is you who have made the heavens and earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Build in your mind for a moment the most extravagant display of God's power that you can imagine. God has it covered. Now, know this. It doesn't come even close to scratching the surface of what God is capable of. It's far more abundant. God's power is absolute, it's enormous, and it's all pervasive. Our closing song is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. It's a composition of an English Christian worship leader, Stuart Townsend, born in 1963. And Stuart says he decided to write this hymn to shift the attention from that modern worship style that focuses so much on our emotions, and he put it back to God. The words are actually printed in your bulletin, and uh, Peggy will play it for a moment. But as we look at this important rooting, establishing of God's love, how deep God's love is as we dwell, I pray that you, being rooted and established in his love, have the power together to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep the love of Christ is, and that you will be filled to a measure of the fullness of God. Amen? Amen. God, we thank you for your words this morning. Lord, I thank you for a little bit more focus, because my mind is everywhere today. God, it's such an important message. We just need to take a breath sometimes, and before we start our day, just remember how much you love us, and then the importance of us coming after that, to grasp that love. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for these still small moments where we can gather, we can come together as a people of God, and we can worship you. Lord, we ask that you'd be with us, that you'd work this message of Ephesians into our hearts and into our lives this week. We give you thanks today in Jesus' name. Amen.
how deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. I'd invite you to, to grab this this week, maybe put it in your Bible, take some time, and maybe just underline what words pop out to you. It's a beautiful song, and again, I think so many contemporary worship songs today are, are so emotionally driven, and uh, we really just need to get back to why we do what we do, right? <laughs> so um, thanks for coming out today. It's great to see everyone, and uh, I hope you have a great, a great week. Um, for the benediction, I could use the one in Ephesians, but I'm going to jump to Thessalonians uh, 5, 20, 23. Please stand for this. Now may God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember those words as you go out from here in peace. Please be seated as the light and the word are taken from the sanctuary.